by the grace of Jesus Christ. Let us read from the Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 3 and verse 13. Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 3 and verse 13. Then Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. <clears throat> and John tried to prevert, prevent him, saying, I need to be baptized by you and you come to me. But Jesus answered and said to him, Permit it to be so now, for thus it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he allowed him. When he had been baptized, Jesus came up immediately from the water. And behold, the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting upon him. <coughs> and suddenly a voice came from heaven, saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And when he had fasted forty days and forty nights, afterward he was hungry. Now when the tempter came to him, he said, If you are the Son of God, command that these stones become bread. And he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him up into the holy city and set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down. For it is written, He shall give his angels charge over you. And in their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against the stone. Jesus said to him, It is written also, You shall not tempt the Lord your God. <clears throat> Again the devil took him up on an exceedingly high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, All these things I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. <coughs> then Jesus said to him, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only you shall serve. <coughs> then the devil left him, and behold, angels came and ministered to him. Amen. After six months, God having pr begun His work that is determined by John the Baptist, now the time from Jesus of Nazareth arrived, the incarnated Word of God, who, who <coughs> walked more than a hundred kilometers. He came down from Galilee and He went to the place where John baptized in water all those who returned with confession, they confessed their sins, and he prepared them with this baptism of repentance, so that we, they may receive the coming one, who did not delay, but six months later he also arrived, being led by God, that he also be baptized in water, by John, who had this mission and this authority. When John saw him, he said, because he knew him, he was a, a relative. He said, I am in need to be baptized by you. And you come to be baptized by me. But the Lord answered and explained for what reason he comes to be baptized. He comes to be baptized not with a baptism of repentance, nor with a baptism of salvation. A baptism of obedience to the word of God. Besides, baptism of repentance was performed by him who was baptized as a baptism of obedience to God. Furthermore, baptism of salvation is performed by him who is baptized as a result of his obedience to the word of God and the will of God. Since it is written that says, baptize, be baptized, repent, forgive me, and let every one of you be baptized unto the remission of sins. We are not baptized so that our sins may be remissed. We are baptized because God commands us to be baptized in water. Because God knows that with baptism, there will be remission of sins and the confirmation of our salvation. Baptism is not for our own interest. <coughs> 
And nothing in the life of the Christian is out of interest. That is so God can give us. We do nothing so God can give us. We don't humble ourselves so God can exalt us. We do not walk according to His will. So that God may help us. But Jesus Christ wants... As it is written, he who has the commandments and keeps them, he is the one who loves me. The fulfillment of the word of God and of the will of God that we do it only and only because we love Christ. For that reason only. (laughs) As a work of faith and obedience. So that by faith we were saved and considered before God righteous but also with the works of faith that we be proven to be righteous before God. Do not expect giving and taking with Jesus. He says, the word of God says, whoever humbles himself will be exalted. He says, ask and you shall receive so that your joy may be complete. But the motive is If the motive is for God to give us, then we're just wheat and we need to be cleansed. The motive must be, I come to Christ so He can bless me. If if the motive is, I come to Christ so He can bless me, then He's wheat. Hey, I come to Christ so He can bless my job, so He can give me a wife or a husband. Then you're wheat. You won't stand. You won't be able to stand when the when the winning. When the winning fan is uh, lifted high. I come to Christ because I love Him. Because I worship Him. I come to Christ because I loved Him. And I've known Him. And because I come to Christ because I love Him. I am ready to submit to all His commands. So that it may be proven that I love Him. (coughs) And when it is proven that I love Him. God being pleased, he begins to bless me. But also, if he doesn't bless me, again I will love him. This is the great secret, my brethren. Either if he blesses me or not, I will love him. Because I care about being with him eternally. Even if he answers or not, I will love him. I do not come to say, give me so, you can, so I can give you, because if you don't give me, why should I give you? This is a merchant's way of faith, a wretched faith. That when you will find yourself across from the temptations, the devil will bring you down. So when John told him, I must be baptized by you, he said, stop. It isn't who must be baptized. It's whom does God declare. It isn't for us to live the way that we think. But to obey the word of God. It is very clear my brethren who is wheat and who is hay. If you have come to be blessed. Then God the devil will pull you out. If you come here because you love him. No one will be able to touch you. Let us wonder and question ourselves why we've come to church today. Why are we here? So he can give us and we can give him. He will give us but we won't stay with him. Because he is faithful to his word and he cannot deny himself. But we won't remain. Because what is going to follow is temptation. I've come here today because I love Jesus. I did not come here to preach. I did not come here to see you. I've come because I love Christ. Make this to be the truth in our life, my brethren, my Lord. Make it be the truth. This is where the cleansing of the threshing floor will begin from. <coughs> and how we will repent. We will repent. I do not come to church 
so that God may make me wealthy. I do not come to church so Christ can marry me off with somebody. I do not come to church so things can go well in my life. I come to church because I have loved him. Because he first loved me. Do you love Christ, my brother? Tell him so. But prove it to him as well. John understood and he immediately was baptized. And then in the obedience of John the Baptist, and the uh, obedience of Christ and John the Baptist, the triune God intervened and appeared. The appearance of the glory of God came. <clears throat> the presence of the Holy Spirit came upon him in the form of a dove and alighted on him, proving to John and to everyone else that he is the Son of God. And then the voice came from heaven, the voice of God, that said, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. And why am I pleased now? Because he did my will. I repeat something that I wanted to remain in our ears always. We did not come here to live the way we like, but we've come here to obey the Word of God in all accords and the voice of the Holy Spirit. Amen, my brethren? Amen? Yes, Lord Jesus, help us. Help us. We are weak. And immediately, the Holy Spirit takes him into the wilderness so he can fast for 40 days and 40 nights so that every human power and might can leave from upon his body but even from his soul and from his spirit so that he may be tempted by the devil. The devil will never tempt him unless God permit it, permitted it. And so that he may make the temptation of the devil easy he, the Holy Spirit takes him into the wilderness. There alone, face to face with him. Mouth to mouth with the devil. Now the question. Is it possible for the devil to win? <coughs> question. Is it possible for the devil to win? And beat him in this temptation? If he is God, well, there's no chance for this. Then why does he try to do it? He's the second Adam. Adam was the son of God as well. That is what the word of God reveals to us. <coughs> forty days and forty nights. In the end, he became hungry. And when he was in perfect weakness... According to the desire of his flesh, the tempter appeared before him. But my dear brethren, temptation has two directions. From outward, from the devil inward, and from the inside of man toward the outside. There's no chance for the devil to beat him because the inner man of Jesus of Nazareth has no passions or desires. From the desires is man tempted. From his own desires. And he doesn't have desires. He is cleaned. Forgive me Lord. His threshing floor is cleaned. He is holy. He doesn't have desires in his soul. To say I want, I want this and that. I need this. I want it. <clears throat> but in his soul. There is the Holy Word of God. For that reason, the devil has no chance of beating him. He is cleansed, and forgive me again, Lord, for saying this. The threshing floor of Jesus Christ is cleaned. This man, Christ Jesus. <coughs> the crucial point of victory is not of the temptations that come from outside, which will come, but it is... Our resistance from within. His body was hungry. 
Adam and Eve saw that it was good to eat. Tasty. It was hungry. But it did not come here to live with, with food. He came to live with obedience. If we want to live, not the way that the flesh, the soul, and the spirit says, but the way that the word of God says. If you are the Son of God, did you not hear the voice? This is my beloved Son in whom I'm well pleased. If you are the Son of God, because he saw a man standing before him. Are you a Son of God? (coughs) Nobody knows this, only you and God. No one knows except him who receives. If you are the Son of God... Then speak a word to these rocks, these stones, so that they may become bread and you can be satisfied. A nice suggestion, but let us see what temptation really is. The intrusions of the devil against the obedience of the will of God. The devil brings forth things that God has not told you. (coughs) It's easy. Speak to these uh, rocks and tell them to become food, uh, bread and you'll eat. You're the son of God. Let's, let's see if you really are. But he doesn't submit to the desires of the devil because his heart does not have desires nor passions. His heart is full of the decision of obedience to the word of God. For that reason he expresses the thing that the word of God says, who dwells richly within himself. Man shall not live with bread alone. I do not care about living in this life with pleasures, with enjoyment. With God doing all favors for me. I have come so that I may do all the will of God for God. I do not want God to do the things that I want. I want God to give me power and grace so that I may do the things that He wants. Why? Because I love Him. And I do not expect from God to give me so I can give Him. But I offer my body as a living sacrifice that is holy, pleasing to God. And this is my sensible worship. To offer my body as a sacrifice. Just as Christ offered his body as a sacrifice. Man shall not live with bread alone. But man will live with every word that comes forth from the mouth of God. The devil was silenced. He lost the first round of his assault. The second round in his spirit and his arrogance of the world. But Jesus doesn't have an arrogant spirit. He is lowly and humble in the heart. And meek. He takes him and he, and he puts him on a high mountain. <coughs> in the pinnacle of the temple. Forgive me. And he said, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down. Because listen, not like the breads here. This is the word of God. It is written. And he said... He shall command, he shall give his angels charge over you, and in their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against the stone. So here comes the temptation from the words of God he uses. The devil is all cunning. An impressive spectacle is what he reveals to him, full of glory and authority. Which, forgive me, an impressive appearance full of glory as he sees the angels being ready according to the word of God to protect him. But our Lord, again, does not obey, he does not agree with this intrusion of the enemy.
God has not told them, go up and fall down, because he would do it if he had told them so. God told them, if it happens that you fall, I will keep you. I'll protect you. For that reason, his answer was, It is written again, You shall not tempt the Lord your God. And how do we tempt our God, my brethren? If we are indifferent to the will of God and the word of God, and we present ourselves with our own abilities, with overprotection. You know who I am? In other words, Christ is my servant. God, Jesus Christ, is the one who protects me. Whatever I do, He's with me. Not so. No matter what happens, I am with Him. No matter what hap- comes in my life, I will hope in Christ. He is not forced to serve me. I am enforced I have to obey him he is not obligated to protect me in my sins I am obligated to repent in my sins he is not obligated to be my guardian I am obligated to glorify him and he will protect me to completely different views of things. The one appearance is we live with the help of God and the other is we help so we can we live so we can obey God. <clears throat> we do not depend on the fact that God helps us. We do so as well, but we strive to glorify him and to obey him. He is the not the the main person in our life is not ourself. The main person in our life is our Lord. He is not our servant. We are his servants. I am not a Lord. He is the Lord. Two completely different views. That everything depends on if you love Christ. If you do not love Christ, the hunger will lead you to obey the intrusions of the enemy if you do not love Christ. Your arrogance will bring you to the point of tempting God. But again the devil insists now in his soul in his heart and his desires. Again the devil takes him to a high mountain an exceedingly high mountain And he shows him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, All these things I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. But, my dear beloved brethren, indeed all these things will be given to Jesus Christ. But after his sacrifice, after his cross, not now, nor by you devil nor in this way so that I may I have to worship you but with the sacrifice of obedience behold I give authority to you to step upon serpents and snakes and all the power of the enemy and no one will be able to harm you is what the Word of God says to whom to the ones that love Christ to the ones who come because they love Christ. Because the first commandment is you shall love the Lord your God with all your, your heart, power, and mind, and soul. This is the commandment. And then God will be your defender. And then God will be your helper. And then God will be your savior. Why? Because you love Him. And how was your love proved? With your obedience to Him. So, no matter what we may hear from any mouth, 
The crucial point is not, is it right or wrong? The crucial point is, has God told me so or is he not? The crucial point is not for me to think, let me do him his favor. The crucial point is to do what Christ wants me to do. Why? Because in that way, he will lift up his winnowing fan. And I do not want him to find me to be chaff. That I seek and ask and seek and want and not care about this beloved person, the beloved of my soul. We will not partake in the rapture of the church, my dear brethren, if we do not love Christ. If we love other things, if we want other things, if we aspire to other things. Christ has one commandment. Seek the kingdom of God first. Go there. And His righteousness. Obey His word. And then everything else shall be added unto you. If you begin with everything or some of everything else, then neither will the kingdom of God be given you, nor will you walk in the righteousness of God. Why? You want it. But you won't manage to beat the devil when he will tempt you. Why? (coughs) Because the temptation that will come from out, from without, will find response in your inner man. You see? You prayed, but he didn't hear you. Forget about him. I've heard this thing so many times. I've seen young people so many times. I have young people in mind, that's why I say it. But older people as well, I, I suppose. They tell me, I prayed for the Lord to baptize me in the Holy Spirit, and he did not, so I am leaving. <clears throat> the devil tempted him and beat him. I prayed for Christ to heal me, and he did not, so I'm leaving. I prayed for Christ to give me a wife or a husband, and he did not, so now I'm leaving. This person is not appropriate for the kingdom of heaven. Not because Christ doesn't want him, but because the intrusions of the enemy will find good soil to work upon. A prepared person for his suggestions. Uh, How much do I like the three young men when Nebuchadnezzar told them, Worship my God, because I will throw you into the furnace. Why did they not do it? Was it difficult for them to just bow their head and it to be over with? It's easy. Again, they'd have their positions. Again, they'd worship their own God. Again, they'd glorify their God. They'd return to that. But this was a temptation. And they had to resist. And they did resist with love. And they overcame. They won. I know, we know, that our God can free us. But even if He does not free us, because we love Him, again we will not worship your gods in your image, my King. The words are so nice. If He answers you, will you love Him? If He doesn't answer you, will you continue to love Him? And you know, my dear brethren, God usually doesn't answer. And don't be amazed by what I'm telling you now. So I can say it more correctly. He doesn't answer immediately. So I can say it more correctly. He doesn't answer when you seek it. The way that you want it. At the time when you want it. How you want it. God is and remains the Lord. We must accept this. He is our Lord and our God. Is He? My brethren, this word today is not so God can grieve us. It's not so God can punish us because He knows that we all, unfortunately, are so the way that we must not be. But He says this because He loves us with everlasting love. Let us turn our eyes, our seeking to loving Jesus Christ who is our Lord and our God with our whole heart with our whole soul our whole power all our mind so that now that the winnowing fan will come because it will come 
God showed a vision that we are here in church and a great wave came in and though the church was full some were pull, pulled outside and who were the ones who remained their feet were steady, planted on the ground on concrete and this foundation is our love toward Christ love never fails let us love Jesus and so I can say it more correctly let us ask from God to flood our hearts with love for this blessed person that is called Jesus Christ the Son of the Living God <clears throat> this blessed person who is the Lord of all hosts and whom has been given all authority in heaven and on earth that we love him and trust him and hope in him alone so that we may remain steadfast and immovable working in his work for the glory of God the Father but also for infinite blessing in our life not as uh, give me so I can give you but as I love you I obey you I love you and I bless you amen <laughs>